Hi, I'm Miss Mandy Panda, a product manager. And I'm a UI UX artist, a product designer. And we're from the interactivity team here at Roblox. Thanks for joining us. Today, we'll be teaching you about styling. Styling lets you create and globally apply visual styles to UI instance properties similar to CSS for web. We're stoked for styling. It simplifies the UI authoring workflow and makes prototyping so much faster, whether you're working as a solo developer or in a team of designers and engineers. We just released a set of APIs and our no-code style editor into Studio Beta, so feel free to follow along there. This video focuses on the no-code workflow. If you're interested in learning the code-first workflow, be sure to check out the documentation linked in the description. Let's get started. You can find the style editor in the UI tab. When you open the style editor, click Create Design to generate a base style set. There are three main tabs in the style editor, style sheets, tokens, and themes. We'll explore these tabs in order as we teach you how to style your UI. First, let's create a style sheet, which is made up of multiple style rules. Each style rule defines visual properties that apply to specific UI classes, like frames, text buttons, or image labels. Component modifiers, like UI corner or UI stroke, GUI states, or even multiple classes using tags. I'll show you how to make two simple style rules. Let's start with creating a style rule for a frame. Find the Frame tab in the left menu. We're going to add two properties. I want background color 3 to be magenta, and I want the size to be scaled to 0.3 on both axes. As I'm editing these properties, the preview will dynamically adjust. I also want my frames to have a thick black border. If I click on the three dots next to frame, I can find the UI stroke component under pseudo instance. I want the color to be black, and I'll set the thickness to be 3. Now, when I go back to the frame tab, you can see the UI stroke applied. Next, let's create a style rule for a text button. I want my buttons to turn magenta when I hover over them, so I'm going to style the GUI state selector hover. I'm going to set background color 3 to be magenta, and I want my text to turn white upon hover as well. I'll also set auto button color to false. To see these in action, let me create a screen GUI and populate it with some UI. Notice that a style link auto-populates inside the screen GUI, since the auto add button is checked on my style sheet. I'm throwing in one frame and three buttons. You can see that the visual properties I've set through styling are automatically applied. Easy, right? Now that we've created a basic style sheet, let's step it up a notch with tokens. Tokens are reusable design variables for UI properties. Rather than manually setting specific colors or sizes over and over again, we can globally manage all of these using tokens. Find the Tokens tab in the left menu of the Style Editor and create a new Token Style Sheet. I'll rename this to Token Sheet. Let's turn that magenta color I've been using into a token. I'll label it Magenta. For fun, let's make another color into a token. I'll label this one Cyan. Now, I can go back to my style sheet and replace all my manual magenta colors with this token. I can reference the magenta token by typing in the dollar sign followed by my token name. This is great because my previous magentas were actually slightly off shade from each other. Now, every time I use this token, it'll refer to the same color. If I decide to change it in the future, I can just update the token and it'll update everywhere. Finally, let's talk about themes. Themes let us swap out a whole set of styles at once. This is perfect for things like light versus dark modes, seasonal UI changes, and even different sizes. With the style editor, we can create themes by grouping tokens together. To create a theme, find the themes tab in the left menu, create a themes folder, and create a theme style sheet. I'll rename the style sheet to theme A. In theme A, I want my primary color to be magenta. So I'm going to create a token called primary color and link it to my existing magenta token. I'm now going to create a second theme, theme B, in the same folder as theme A. In theme B, I want my primary color to be cyan, so I'm going to create the same token as I did in theme A called primary color, but this time link it to my existing cyan token. It's important that the variable you intend to swap between themes is labeled the same name. Now, I can go back to my style sheet and replace the magenta token from earlier with my new primary color token. Notice that when I swap themes through my folder, the theme-based tokens will update. 
The style editor theme swapping is an edit time feature. If you want to dynamically change themes at runtime, you can hook up a script to do so. For time's sake, I'm going to copy and paste in this script. Feel free to pause to take a look. Now, at runtime, depending on a randomly generated number, my theme will change. So now that we've learned the basics, let's look at a more complex example utilizing multiple style rules, tokens, and themes. One concept needed to create something like this is tags. If you are familiar with collection service, tags are a set of strings applied to instances. With styling, tags can be used to make multiple rules with unique properties under a specific UI class, like a frame. Building off our previous example, the text button rule is great if you want all your text buttons to be the same, but oftentimes you will want to have multiple rules for the same type of class, like a primary and a secondary button, for example. To do this, you'd use tags. Navigate to the text button rule, click the menu icon, and select new tag. I'll rename this button square. And I'll add a background color three property, set it to gray, and then a size property, and set it to 100 by 100. To apply this tag, select an instance in the Explorer, and then click Apply Tag in the Style Editor. Notice they all share the same hover state, but the tag instance has unique properties. Now let's take a look at a more complex example using style rules, tags, tokens, and themes. As you'll see, this is an incredibly powerful system, and once you put everything together, you can create a design system that is easy to manage and update. Everything you see here is controlled by styling. The buttons are using tags for states. The item colors can easily be changed just by selecting the instance and applying the tag. The tokens are organized into colors and fonts. The character class is a theme where all the colors, images, and even text are easily swappable. The fonts are also swappable and work independent of the character class. And with a little code to change the tags and themes, let's see this in action. To summarize, styling lets you create custom style sheets, use tokens for flexible use, and create themes to easily switch up your UI's look. We hope this video gave you some familiarity with how to use the Style Editor tool to build cool styles. To learn more, you can find our resources linked below in our documentation or dev forum post. Please reach out to us if you have any feedback. We can't wait to see all the great UI you build with styling.